We're totally unmuted and we have got that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to Murder Hobo Inc. Between the Rolls. I am Smooth Kyle K. Uh, if I added another K, we'd have a problem and probably get shut yeah, down right. by YouTube and everyone else. But I'll that's not up. the case tonight. Oh, I wasn't yeah. going to put it up. It's it's a cute little drop bear. Uh, yeah. Uh, my version yeah. of an owl bear. Right. Uh, unfortunately, they're small, so you can't mount them unless you're trying to mount them in the same way that the Scottish like to mount sheep. Uh, you'd know more about uh, that, wouldn't you, Frank? Yeah, uh, thank you for all of our former listeners from Scotland. This is Murder Hobo Inc. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm from Indiana, from the rural. True. That's true. Oh, that's even worse. It literally puts you on an island just so you could. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, we need to get there. Get on. Dude, track, let's man. get on track again, guys. Like I said, Murder Hobo Inc. First of all, let's go through the spiel. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to ask us a bunch of questions, you can hit us up on Discord. And while not this week, uh, since we have the campaigns going on, but the following week, you can ask to join into one of our many one shots that we like to do and throw out there for our forever DMs. Just hit us up at mhoboinc at gmail.com. If you want to buy some really cool and awesome swag, uh, I'm specifically talking about the cred swag. Mm -hmm. uh, follow the link that pops up every now and then. You can also hit another link that'll take you to an audio only podcast version on Podbean. If you are actually interested in, you know, not looking at our gorgeous faces. I mean, let's be fair. Come on. These are the faces you came to see, especially with this gorgeous mutton chops of friendliness that I have now. There you go. <laughs> you know, you got to click back and watch that again. Uh, we also like chops. to thank <laughs> our sponsors pirate dog dice for when you roll like shit pirate dog dice uh i'd also like to thank pirate dog dice even though this is not official but for the cred campaign and i'm going to show this off just about every single time except my arms can't hold it up it's so heavy <laughs> <laughs> hey uh like i, I see a big that... guy in there what uh what numbers uh, what number is that, that uh the most popular number that my my crew rolls, which is a natural one. The which is probably why that ship the... is at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah. <laughs> Found another sandbar, tipped over, fell into Oops. the deepest part of the ocean. Nice. Funny how that works. <laughs> but if you want some cool dice made, hit up Pirate Dog Dice. Finally, if your game stinks, it's a little fishy. Go to Odd Fish Game, get some adventure sense. Oh, wait, whoa, whoa. Which one is that one? Uh, pirate ship. Oh, <gasps> to match. Oh my gosh! Nice. Smells well, like. Does it smell like uh, bay rum and gunpowder? <laughs> uh, yes, it does smell like gunpowder and old wood. And mm. Captain Morgan and fish. Nice. Like I Captain tell you Morgan what, later. I am probably going to have to hit them up at their website and do some work for them over at Gen Con, just so I can get some pirate ship smelling uh sense nice uh, you could also do the same but only if i don't beat you to it please <laughs> do it i really want that pirate ship smells they also do many other projects such as the shine, the shine project. So I, know, I said project and then i was like what's the thing that isn't the shine project it's how to rpg with your cat which that is too. on kickstarter now support that it's pretty awesome they also do the cooking with D and D as well. We haven't talked about that lately, but yeah. I made some uh, some uh, uh, interesting interesting colds uh, cooked solely by acid uh, uh, sandwiches, and they were delicious. I mean, the bread isn't cooked with acid; that would get soggy and it just kind of dissolve. But you right. get that nice. No, just me. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, I think that's just about everything I have to say. Uh, I should <laughs> nice. mention the MurderHoboCon.com tickets live this week. But that also might just be because it's a very old, that's an uh, old script. <laughs> script. So I'm out of the loop again. Sorry, I got to write the check. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right. But before we uh, uh, start talking about our topic today, we've got a, a, a mount up, giddy up back into this past week and and talk about some some previous games that we played, uh, I believe, starting on Thursday with Ooh. Cacophony. Cacophony. And by the way, to introduce myself, hi, I'm David. Exactly. That's the plan. That's what's the I'm plan. on the Calamity campaign. I'm on Between the Roles. I'm on both Calamity campaigns, uh, Team A and Team B. So, yeah, I play Ingbe and I also play uh, Crow. And uh, soon to be wrapping up is our soap opera, uh, Cacophony, where I play the changeling Zadar. So, anyway. What so, happened? speaking of Cacophony, after, after Frank does his intro, hi, he's Frank. <laughs> Oh, I'll do my intro next. You're fine. Okay, nice. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm David. I'm on Cacophony. I play Zadar. So this past episode is, oh, let's just, it's called Suma Strait. And yeah, let's just say ocean voyages are just as bad as trying to cross a frozen tundra. So... <laughs> Oh, what could possibly go wrong? So pretty much everything, folks. So yes, as we left uh, Freckland, um, we were we were sent on our way. We were given uh, gifts of food, coffee, things like that. Camille was happy, and uh, we also had taken a passenger with us. We had taken the shaman. Of, what was her name, Frank? Sorry. That's what it Anyway, <laughs> we take her. <laughs> she has a kind of relationship with uh, our airship driver, Aerosmith. Boy, he's really going to be stumped with that. It's just, it's your own character, man. <laughs> yeah, but I, I wasn't. I, you're doing the cacophony recap. I'm... Don't you write notes, Frank? Yeah, but I'm not going to look them up. I'm, I'm yeah, deeply I intense. But anyway... So, so I gotta check my notes. <laughs> so it's a total, it's a crew of five on this airship. You have Zadar, you have Camille, we have Daphne, and then we have Aerosmith and the, the Druid Shaman type person. Anyway, so we start our voyage, okay? We start skirting the coastline for as long as we can. And of course, we run into our old friends, the Frost Giants, because they're on the coast. And uh, yeah, they take a pop shot at it. Uh, Daphne takes a boulder to the face. Uh, <laughs> again. Again. Uh, yes. So uh, eventually we run out of coastline and we start our journey and uh, our ocean journey. And as we're crossing to avoid the weather uh, systems, as it gets colder up top, uh, we have to stay low. So we are just... 25 feet above the ocean as we're we're crossing what could possibly go wrong so suki the witch is the druid so it was suki okay so uh yeah so crossing on on this voyage uh we run into several things we all have to take turns taking the helm while the others rest so of course we have percentage rolls and dice rolls to to make, to make see whether or not you know the watch stays on course who's ever the helmsman for that for that watch and of course zadar rolls low <laughs> so we're Repeatedly. off the <laughs> immediately and then uh the others i mean even camille uh had a low dice roll so we were so we were off quite a bit so we ran into some stormy weather you know we kept rolling weather for weather we kept getting rain so so it was a rainy ocean voyage <laughs> and of course other incidences ensue like for example it is an airship so the balloon has a tear in it <laughs> so we had to we had to solve that problem. So we solved it with having Camille scale the balloon and cast bending on it, rolled poorly and ended up in the ocean. <laughs> and so Zadar throws out a line trying to get her, uh, you know, as the 
you know, Camille is vying for the line. All of a sudden there, there's like fog and something clears and it is a giant ship. <laughs> so as our line is just drifting away from Camille and all this, this ship is in view and, and on collision course with Camille and they're throwing ropes out. And one of them's, you know, Camille grabs a rope and they, hoist her up and it's a crow and minotaur and they're just like hey i caught a kid <laughs> so of course camille was offended so of anyway <laughs> they're pirates they're pirates but they're also working in a courier capacity as we find out later <laughs> so turns out that we have a good good parlay with these pirates they give us passage uh turns out our airship is shadowing the the ship for a while they you know we reveal ourselves to the captain and all that and they lash us to their ship the airship so we're going but the weather gets bad they end up having to to cut loose and we finish the voyage with uh, the captain they happen to be going to the same destination which is the grand academy hey uh, who who were they uh, working in the delivery service for I don't know. Some gentleman. Uh, I don't know. Some Kyle, who, guy, who right? would that be? I have no idea. It's probably some dirty competitor. It is Devil Thibbet. <laughs> you know? <laughs> you know what? I appreciate that because you're using pirates as a courier service. Mm-hmm. And Dibble Thibbet is not on the up and up. So I No, he is that. not. So... <laughs> Yeah, so we uh yeah, so after so did they say several the line? days did they say the line? Did the captain say the line? The captain did no, not say the line. Say the How line. D- oh, he is uh, not getting paid. So anyway. <laughs> all right. So then so it, it's a couple days for this journey. The airship had to cut loose. Go on without us. Uh we'll catch up a couple days later. Uh, anyway, so the rest of the journey is fine. Daphne uh, uh, hooks up with a member of the crew who was not a minotaur. Banging. <laughs> Banging. Yeah. So, yeah, she was she definitely a yes. in a while. So, yeah. So, it was another tiefling. It was their spellcaster. So, a warlock. And um, yeah, he and, he and Daphne hit it off. So, uh, <laughs> well, nice. he has not delivered the item yet. Exactly. Uh, nice, <laughs> Kyle. Nice. You'll find out what happens like that on the next episode. But anyway, hopefully you Frank nibble can it. Remember. We did it. Uh huh. Oh no! Oh no! Okay. So so we reach our destination after you know Daphne's erotic cruise. Uh, we arrive to our destination, the Grand Academy. The captain says he has a package to deliver to none other than Sneed. That's who, who he was told. And with explicit instructions that it is to only to be delivered to Mortimer J. Sneed and, pl- and given directly to him. And yeah, so as we're... The ship pulls up, it can't dock, so we have to take long long boats in, which, yeah, Daphne rolled poorly for the long boat. Anyway, <laughs> um, so we're there, Mortimer's missing. Uh, all of a sudden, there's a flash of light, smell of, I don't know, combustion and stuff like that. Mortimer appears, slightly wounded, and some others that are wounded and whatever recognizes us you know it's glad to see us and uh yeah and he has a delivery waiting for him not to mention what zadar has to bring him to and yeah dave the player panicked and asked frank what timeline are we on (laughs) because if you watched our last campaign i don't know is it a crossover frank (laughs) All the buildings are made of wood, not of stone. Yeah. Wow. Well, you would think the Grand Academy would be made out of stone, but... It is. Oh. When certain individuals are playing. Oh, okay. (laughs) 
<laughs> you, got, you got to build from somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. So from the so, ashes yeah. works the best. Mm-hmm. We'll see how this goes. So anyhow, that is our episode of Cacophony. Check us out. Uh, <coughs> it's in the archives. It's uh, in YouTube. So yeah, I mean, it's a funny episode. It's a really funny episode. So you'll enjoy it. All right. Well, Frank, what happened next? Uh, did we not have a uh, Saturday game? Uh, we did not have a Saturday game. It was supposed to be a one shot, but the players that we had uh, prepped for it all had engagements. So uh, we had a night off, and I got to say, uh, not nice. bad. It, uh, <laughs> it was much needed. But we did play on Sunday. Uh, now, folks, if you're looking at the uh, archive, you may notice that the numbers are kind of uh, backwards. Uh, that's on me uh, because anyway uh but yes two episode 274 was on thursday episode 273 was on sunday but it was called back to the breach it is our tri-generational game uh we got uh three different generations of a family playing uh in the margu system these guys are in the halfling kingdom and they are creating nine kinds of chaos they are currently trying to get a roadhouse back operational after a red dragon burn it down they have now decided that uh, if there's a dragon, there's a dragon horde, even though there are bounty hunters, adventurers, and an army uh, all probably looking to kill them, uh, and they head right back into the teeth. They go into the mountains, uh, which are not really mountains, but the land that once stood there has all dropped. Uh, so it's kind of a Grand Canyon with mountains down below. Uh, not a very hospitable place. Uh, others, after hearing that the Red Dragon had sadly expired, also felt the same thing. And uh, there are 71 would-be lottery winners headed into this area. Now, the Margu campaigners are not big on sharing. Uh, so they have formulated several plans on how to deal with it. Uh, because they are on a timeline. If they do not get to the capital of the half Ah. Kingdom in 27 days, uh, notwithstanding travel, they will lose the opportunity to own the roadhouse. Jesus Christ, I'll kill that dog. Kids and dogs, man. My kids are great. What are you talking about? uh, Yeah, your kid was on Green Room. Uh, So... (laughs) Uh, These guys have ventured forth, uh, going through the area. It's very narrow passage. Shale falls at inopportune times. Uh, They have spotted several other groups uh, horning in on the area, and that does not please them. Uh, uh, In post, they actually came up with the opinion that, you know, if the military comes in there, they're just going to take over the Halfling Kingdom. And I had to remind them that during the episode, they had a problem with six cockatrice and a group of halfling first levels who peppered their rogue filled with arrows and uh, copious V bitters was paralyzed by the cockatrice. So I don't think these guys are ready to go kingdom building. Uh, so if they get any nope. funny ideas, it may TPK on them. Uh, but they're searching for the fabled dragon's horde. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if they get it. We'll see if they get it alone. We'll see if they can get back uh, to their mounts. Uh, and that will segue us into the main topic. Uh, but the Margu campaign is every Sunday. Uh, it is one specific family. It's a closed game. Uh, but if you want to look for some hilarity, uh, this past weekend was the 51st episode of these guys. And it is an ongoing tale of chaos and mayhem. Uh, tonight, we're going to go ahead and discuss mounts, uh, be it regular or irregular. Hold, uh, on, it, hold on. I got the perfect image for irregular. That's bad. If your okay. mount is irregular, that could be a problem. <laughs> Sorry. Had to make the joke. Nice. Ah, Man, nice. Uh, so in the Margu campaign, they have zonkeys. They almost. thought it was going to be a penis. I thought it was going to be the penis picture again. Uh, they have zonkeys and giant chickens uh, as mounts, uh, which uh, there was some bitching in green room about, oh, well, when Frank gives us mounts, blah, blah, blah. 
I have never said no. <laughs> I will say I do have a giant mountain goat who has not died yet. No. Despite well. a lot of attempts to murder. Yeah. Yeah. So see, you know. Nice. <clears throat> so the questions we're going to put to the panel today are... Uh, Let's go ahead and start with your standard domestic mounts, uh, be it a war dog for a halfling or a gnome, uh, all the way up to a light war horse. Since Kyle hasn't gotten to talk very much because he didn't have any games this weekend, we will start with you. Uh, Kyle, what do you see as the positives and the negatives for owning your standard mount? Oh, the positives and the negatives? I mean, a mount's just wonderful to have so you don't tire yourself out. That's just about it, honestly. Really? Sounds like right. animal handling, too. <laughs> yeah, I mean, animal handling, that's all good. Um, oh, you better hope it's good. <laughs> you you know what? Let, let's stick with just the good and then we'll come back to you for the negative. There you go. I can, I can say a lot of negative things about 5e mounts. Sure. So David, I, I can what always be negative. What, what he missed besides, you know, it is your mode of transportation. Yeah. Uh, the cost. I mean, if you're you're new adventurers and you're low on coin, you may now, not is that be good able or to we're, we're going good only. Oh, good. Okay. Good. If you got the coin, then mounts are great. Uh, they are because uh, that gives DMs kind of. Uh, little more liberty with the timeline and stuff like that though i'm sure a dm will have you roll for how far you travel or something like that uh they're they're uh i i think in in the dungeon master's guide i think they only like kind of touch on it a little bit but you can have them roll uh you know i mean there are other factors that but i mean amount is great to get your characters from point A to point B and beyond. So, yeah, I mean, I am all for mounts. I am crazy about mounts, actually. So, I mean, yes, they are all, they're, they're a great thing to have in a game unless your DM is like Frank and is going to kill them. <laughs> so. Now, I, I think you guys are missing the big point here, and I, I even alluded to it in the Margaret campaign. If you're going to find a dragon horn... Those are pack animals, man. You can carry a lot more shit. Exactly. Uh, Saddlebags carry disc. a lot more. 500 pounds of gold right on a disc. Doesn't cost you an arm and a leg to uh, have a horse. What if you have yeah, more than tensor's gold? floating disc is only good for how long? Enough to make another tensor's floating disc. And yeah, put it right you can just keep casting it. Oh, timer's almost out, but yeah, no, I Okay, get so it. you spend a feat to uh, get the sorcerer meta magic to uh, extend the spell. Yeah, the there you go. Yeah, yeah there, there's always, there's always, uh, there's always a loophole or a caveat somewhere. So well, if you're carrying tech, say... you're carrying food, you're carrying oil. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh yeah, yeah. That's just. I want to take that and I want to step into the bag here, um, because mounts are super, uh, in my opinion, are super important for those reasons. But then, what we lack, and however many years of Five E that has been out, is there's no support or interest, uh, either by players or by uh, Wizards of the Coast to deal with traveling mm -hmm. if i mean you... that'd be a great third party thing for somebody to develop i mean yes and you can find those things um a lot of what adventures realize and i think dms do is they make the adventure solely about okay this is where you got the adventure from the wizard in the tavern we're going to travel and now you're here at the cave of lost souls right mounts wait outside oh by the way they get eaten by a passing owlbear and so right. on and so forth and you skip this huge middle section of okay this is where the mounts actually are saving you here because yeah you get to the cavern but because you had a mount or you had two horses one you're 
not tired and exhausted by the time you get there. It's not nighttime, so you don't rest out in the middle of the wilds. You have a way to travel all your gold, get that back. And maybe because you are riding on a horse, uh, owlbears notoriously love to eat horses. Horse flesh is an owlbear's favorite food. And bullet. Is bullet a favorite food? No, bullet likes horses. Oh. Yeah, bullets, they eat anything. (laughs) Sure. There you go. And so you're missing out on potential hooks, adventures, complications, and travels. Uh, And so there's your negatives for that. That and you have to play a small race if you want to bring your mount into the cave of Lost Souls. Yeah. Um, David, negatives. Negatives? Well, I was going to touch on one positive, positive, mm-hmm. and then I'll get into the negative. Uh, positive is mounts can have accessories mm-hmm. like wagons, carts, things like that. And that just adds to the, the you know, utility of having a mount. And uh, so the negatives, yeah, they can die, they can be eaten, <laughs> they can uh, if you're starving, that could be a benefit, yeah. That could be a benefit. <laughs> I thought they smelled bad on the outside. You know that Renorex sway back that you guys had? And you're st- <laughs> that was appropriate. <clears throat> well, thinking back to Cacophony, they really could have used a Tauntaun. <laughs> yeah, we could have. We really could have in that episode. But but yeah, no, the negatives is that shit can happen to mounts. You know, I mean, you know, if they're if they're a living mount, then yeah. I mean, I mean, if they're mechanical or you know, or like I said, they have an accessory, well, carts, axles break, uh, they take damage, you know, things like that. So so there there are a lot of caveats to having a mount too. But, you know, it all depends on how your DM wants to go with it, you know? I mean, some DMs kind of gl- gloss over it. Absolutely. Yeah, let's say this right now. This is the DM, the more you know. Mm-hmm. This is build up your middle part because your players will lose their shit over mm-hmm. wagons and mounts. That's the coolest part about D&D for some odd reason. But mm-hmm. if you don't make it a cool part, you're missing out, man. Oh yeah, I agree. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, look at Cacophony. They, they're, they're, they have trekked through Telosia on foot. They have trekked through Frecklin on foot. I mean, mm-hmm. having a mount would have seriously expedited a few things. But I'm with Kyle on this one. You know, uh, you're missing a good part here without the flavor of a mount. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That equine flavor. Now, yeah. b- before we move on to the really cool part, the exotics, uh, let's talk about the weird ones that are kind of normal. So, Kyle, if you've got a smaller character, halfling gnome, uh, you know, uh, like Sherlock Holmes <laughs> says, uh, they're dangerous at both ends and crafty in the middle. So you would get something more akin, say, a pony uh, or a war dog or a giant ram. Uh, give me give me both positive and negatives, uh, excluding what we've already discussed with horses. Mm, uh, positive and negatives. I mean, we have to talk about the fact that if you're uh, a dwarf or a halfling and you're riding a pig, you know, if the party does get hungry, your mount is the first one to go. Mm-hmm. Yes. Delicious bacon. <laughs> that battle board that you had? Yeah. Look. Make a good couchon delay. <laughs> <laughs> it was only five gold, man. Here, here's five gold. Let us eat it now. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'll save the ribs for you. Nice. Jesus <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'll say if you're playing with a small character, the upside uh, uh, is that at that point, I mean, we as human beings have mostly ridden horses, ponies, mules. So as soon as you get into a a small character riding a medium sized mount, uh, the fantasy just kind of already is there, even if it's a, a, uh, not a horse. 
a mastiff or a war dog you see mm-hmm. anything riding a war dog and it's like yeah that's this is a fantasy setting it's already set up yeah not to mention you know dogs are just already great to start off on and uh-huh. yeah what about a saint bernard you got your whiskey right there you your whiskey there you right go there. yeah uh david positive and negatives about having the uh weirder mounts the winter mounts okay um, the weirder the pigs, mounts the pigs the war dogs things of that nature um okay the positives uh like kyle addressed was the fantasy immersion with it but uh the availability of the weird is is another thing like if you're doing a campaign in the underdark fine you had your mounts you know and you were able to get to one of the cave entrances and if you're not going through the yawning portal can't bring your mounts in there i mean you know i mean it's too treacherous and stuff like that so like for example there may be something in the underdark that you can purchase mounts from and i think what lizards or something like that are are known for the underdark so as mounts so as uh, as something weird but in a setting like the underdark dark that is the norm so you know but uh but yeah, so that's that's a positive. A drawback is just like, okay, uh, you know, what other settings am I going to use this mount in? If you know, if you're playing it to where you own this mount, are you going to take this mount with you out of the underdark? And how are people going to react? You're 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 riding a cave lizard or something like that, you know? Well, that, that's a good question. What about intimidation factors? Yes, a good mount. There, I'm sure there's some mounts that could be, uh, yeah, big intimidation factor. You know, I, with Kyle's battle pig, I'm thinking uh, tattoo that thing with a variety of uh, obscene graffiti. <laughs> uh, halflings in Eberron, the Talenta halflings, dinosaurs are their mounts. The raptors. Now, now those the are exotic. Those are exotic. Those are exotic. We'll get yeah. into it. But never on, they're the norm. So, you know, so. I, yeah, I, I can't believe neither, either one of you mentioned the Murder Hobo Inc. standard mount. What's up with that? Duck? The war cow. Oh, the war cow. I can't, I, I didn't come to the party until after war cow. So. Yeah, you're yeah. gonna have to fill me in. Come on, tell me about War Cal. Kyle, you're muted. I never actually rode the War Cow, and I don't think anyone actually did. It was just a cow that we put in armor, and then we'd slap its ass to send it into battle, or it would start floating around because of some random spell cast on it. Right. Um... Like, oh, there's that bad guy way over there. Quick, cast levitate on the cow and throw it. <laughs> yeah, Thor and Thor and Dylan, and I think maybe even Big Mike came up with that when they were helping out a farmer. Uh, they really wanted his cow, so they strapped an assortment of weapons to the horns and the tail and sicked it loose on its owner and claimed it for themselves. So mm. wow. the, war, the war cow is a special place in our hey, Sometimes uh, PC, depending on who it is, uh, ends up being a mount. Remember the, that episode with uh, Big Mike and them, the turtle? Yeah, turtle exactly. Turtle sled? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, so let's move on to the exotics. And there are three different categories that I want to go ahead and explore on this. Uh, for you DMs that haven't, you know, incorporated uh, these things. Uh, Kyle's alluded to it. David's alluded to it. Uh, bring a sense of wonder to the table and go ahead and give them something off base. Uh, I want to talk about flying mounts. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about just batshit crazy mounts on land. And then seaborne mounts. So uh, starting with the aerial, the flyers, the top guns, if you will, uh kyle give me a uh, give me a flying mount give me why it's a good thing give me why it's a bad thing uh well why it's a good thing why it's a bad thing i mean we're off to a great i I can think of one bad thing gravity (laughs) cancel okay sorry the zoom thing worked 
Well, I mean, uh, I can think of several as well. The griffin, the hippogriff. Uh, um, oh, gosh, what is the elf eating one? The periton. Um, I was just thinking, you know what? Go big or go home. Uh, what about a rock? Okay. Uh-huh. That just one of the, uh, I mean, we talk about mounts, but you, they're used for transportation. So why not go with, like, say, a giant animal that is not just transporting um <coughs> one individual rider but several like a bus in which case you get a rock that carries around a little bird cage and is uh-huh. carrying around the entire party or has a uh, a mobile home strapped to its belly uh, flintstones man remember the big pterodax with the you know the oh, yeah, airplane you know? You know? I, i'm thinking it should be named the hindenburg <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we can create one of those too. I mean, you know, that those are mounts also is the mechanicals and the crafted, you know. So well, good but, and bad, uh, Kyle. Good and bad. I mean, you've got great visibility. You always have the high ground, uh, mm-hmm. high ground, um, and you'll never be defeated because of high ground. I have the high ground, high ground. When you have a flying mount. Uh, that being said, um, if you fall off your mount or your mount dies, you are no longer a flying mount. You're you're a falling character, <laughs> and those d sixes can add up real quick. Mm-hmm. Nice, nice, uh, David. Flying mounts, flying mounts, man. They're they're great. I mean, you can cover a lot of gr- more ground with a flying mount than what you can with the land mount. So, what uh, I miss on a flying mount? Speed is a factor too. Flying mounts tend to be faster. Um, yeah, uh, you know, but the things like Kyle touched on, like giant animals, like I, I created. Uh, a small coven of witches and what they flew on were giant ravens and stuff like that also uh, another of goblins that I had uh, like I mean not goblins uh, hags uh, they flew on vultures and things like that giant vultures so you can get as creative as you want to be with a with a flying mount and flavor I was it however say, you want um... Real quick, I'm sorry. While you're on it, and you made me remember, are we going? Is this the exotic mount part, or is this the uh, this is the exotic flying mount? Baba Yaga. Yeah, he flies around in a mortar and pestle. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a magical one. And animated Um, objects, man. Yeah, animated objects. Uh, I brought this up in green room. Uh, Make great. You, I mean, hey, you're. Your spellcaster. I mean, you can make a mount out of anything, but there there are also magical items in in the game themselves that fly. A broomstick. Uh, there's also my character purchased a, a flying carpet. You know, in our campaign, and like I was telling Kyle, it was so expensive that basically he had to finance it through a relative, <laughs> a rich relative. So had to have a cosigner. There you go. Nice. What's the negative for you? Uh, the negative, I mean, the negative for things like that, I mean, they can be damaged, caught on fire, you know, things like that. But Arrow one magnet. of the things that, yeah. So, no, oh, man. Um, yeah, you know me. I'm going to shoot at it. <laughs> you're going to shoot at it. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, the other other side is not just that. You have mechanical, too. I mean, you have artificers. They can create things. I mean, we in Cacophony, we have an airship, you know. Also, wow. um, man, <coughs> yeah. uh, exotics, uh, like I brought up, uh, you know, a few moments ago was the Talenta halflings. They have dinosaurs. They have raptor mounts that are not just their ranger companion and companion, but they serve as mounts. Also, pterodaxes too are their flying mounts. Um, but like crafted, I mean, it it could be something small as like a glider. You know, 
uh, a craftsman artificer can create a glider. You know, if you're and, a gnome wizard, you can cast Mage Hand and reduce. That's true. <laughs> yeah, so you can get as creative as you want to as you want in that. I mean, there, yeah, there's there's so many different conveyances. Um, you know, like water, <clears throat> the big cities like Waterdeep and you know Baldur's Gate, they have Griffin <clears throat> Calvaries. You know, so flying mounts are used as part of their security and things like that. So. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's another aspect. Uh, you know, a mount can serve in a game. So, cool. Let's uh, let's put our feet back on the ground and talk about the exotic land animals uh, or constructs. Kyle, back to you. Go ahead and give me something that uh, you would like to ride on ground. <clears throat> I have always wanted to play the artificer uh, uh, gnome. Um, who uh, essentially makes Doc Ox mechanical arms and that straps would be himself cool. to the enter. Be perfect be cool. for an urban adventure. <laughs> you're just clink, clink, clink. Um, and at that point, you also get to go vertical just by climbing up buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, so make a giant ape if you want to give it stats like that or just mm -hmm. octopus arms. It's perfect. Strap yourself in. You're good to go. Good to go. Uh, Got to watch out for the rust and the urine and the poop that Frank will inevitably throw out the window and then get into the gears of your robot. But robot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one of the first old ones I've always wanted to see uh, was probably an axe beak. Mm -hmm. A lot of that because you know, chocobo, chocobos. Oh, chocobo! Don't get me started on chocobos, man. Oh my uh, gosh. I, I play video games and love chocobos. Oh, so. they had uh, Assassin's Creed Origins. Yeah, Final because Fantasy. The guy who made Final Fantasy, they mm -hmm. they put a chocobo in that game. That's a weird camel chocobo cross. That's so disturbing. Just yeah, writing that thing. I'm so sure. Wonderful. Um, but yeah, the at Joker boat, the axe beak, just because they're birds, uh, the axe beaks are known to have bad tempers. And so it's like, well, just know what bird. extra stuff goes into that. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, training and, you know, making sure it doesn't try and kill you in its sleep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Funny story about the Chocobos, uh, Gen Con five, six years ago uh ran shipwreck cove there and the boys from wisconsin there were four of them uh they were playing and one of the last encounters was they had to defeat an etten uh who was harvesting these chocobo slash axe beaks uh the wizard character actually used charm animal on it uh everybody else had to use animal handling well the wizard uh being low on hit points ended up taking a club to the face and his friend is sitting next to him uh the wizard goes unconscious and he's like great i'm just gonna go take a leak so he gets up and leaves his friend's sitting there and he goes is his chocobo still charmed and i'm like yeah <laughs> i'd given them Thanks. stickers for uh their chocobos because they had colors and mm -hmm. i'm like well here's your sticker and he's like no I'll, I'll hold off so his friend comes back and go into the bathroom and he reaches over and goes that's your chocobo <laughs> Dick move, but hilarious move. Uh, oh, we're, yeah. on a, we're on the ground, David. What do you got? What's your what's your mount of choice? Uh, mount of choice for ground, something weird. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, mechanicals. I mean, you know. I mean, there there are things that you can make. Um, guy, uh, one of the things that um, enchanted barding in an armor and all that um, to where it's like a spectral horse type thing. It's and gonna be my, a horse. My favorite thing, and it's a spell that I use on my bard all the time, he's a ritual caster, Phantom Steed. Phantom Steed. And I am familiar with Phantom Steed from Kyle's antics. Wyvern! Yep. <laughs> well, Phantom Steed is, is Pretty much ground 
mounts. I mean, it would take something else to make him fly unless your DN makes an exception or something like that, you know. Uh, well, I was doing a dick move to another character. <laughs> Frank uh-huh. was like, yeah, you can make your... <laughs> your... <laughs> <laughs> you can make it look like a wyvern and just ride it on the ground. Well, uh, the uh, PC in question had suffered a near fatal bite from it and developed a tick anytime a wyvern was mentioned or wyvern. seen. It just <laughs> she ended up dating a woman with a wyvern tattoo. <laughs> Didn't figure that one out for a while. Go ahead, David. Oh man, no, no, Phantom Seed. I liked it in the campaign for Curse of Strahd that I played. Uh, Tatiana mm. uh, Strahd's love interest got killed in a battle, and I had to. Strahd was coming, and uh, you Phantom know he's Phantom on his Steed nightmare. Looked like Tatiana. No, no, he had his his he nightmare. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Phantom Seed is. <laughs> Hey, Strad. Uh, no, so my bard casts it, and I take Tatiana's body, and it's a race against time, but you know, me against Strad, you know, to get it to the abbot to resurrect her and whatever. So it it made for good drama, but like yeah. I said, Phantom Steed's my go-to. <laughs> I like that. I like animated object, you know. So, you know, like I said, the animated barding and all that you know create third yeah. choice you guys are underwater uh oh, you're underwater. assumed you're assumed to be able to breathe what are you going to mount up with kyle well gosh i was actually going to go with a uh, uh an amphibian mount to be honest to get you around the swamps okay. um, and just kind of lead into uh, <clears throat> inspirations for making mounts which is watching the nature planet and just watching the random animals and be like you know what that's cool i'm from Louisiana, i was watching man. one we're, we're about... all about aquatic animals so. there you go <laughs> got get a yourself an alligator god you got yourself a ride you got yourself a ride <laughs> uh i was watching uh the the wetlands in africa the ones that show up during the wet season and then dry up in there and there are these birds called shoebill birds. And they're, one of their toes is about seven foot long. I'll hold that up. That's the size of their toe, the size of my head. Uh, um, one toe. And what they do is they just walk across the lily pads. And because their toes are so long, it disperses the weight perfectly that they can actually walk across as well as carry their young. And one of their things they do to carry their young is they just open up their wings, scoop up their young, stand up, and then start start waddling away. That's awesome. (laughs) And just the image of that, it's like, yeah, you're about to go through the swamp, and uh, yeah, here's a giant shoe, Bill. Are you guys ready? Whoop! (laughs) (laughs) Take you across. Frodo, Frodo, take the shoe, Bill. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Walk across that swamp. <laughs> I find if you're ever in a, uh, in a hole about trying to figure out, you know, what's an interesting way to get the players from point A to point B and you want to throw a mountain is just take something from real life, add the words giant or massive in front of it. Mm-hmm. And animals are so freaking weird that you just make a bigger one and it's yeah. it's magical. It is. Nice. David, you're underwater. What do you got? Okay. One of the things from the campaign that I was in that I discovered <laughs> and I was able to use apparatus of Qualish. <coughs> There's an old 2E reference. Mm-hmm. Loved it. Freaking loved it. And it was awesome. So yeah, mechanical, but uh, if we're doing underwater and stuff like that, hey, Aquaman, man, giant seahorse. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So, sharks, you know, things like that, you know. Giant mantis shrimp that can punch through walls. That would be, that would be awesome. Giant mantis shrimp. Giant Kapow, mantis. you know. <laughs> so. The one uh, thing is, as a mount, you have to 
you can't actually be on it when it punches through something. Otherwise, the sonic boom. The sonic boom, your brain. and it actually heats the water around it. So yeah. it's like, yeah. So it, they're great for the underwater tiefling races that you create. But. Probably, probably. Uh, yeah. So yeah, use your imagination. I mean, look, you know, watch the movie Aquaman. <laughs> I mean, they had mounts galore, man. That that was part of their big finale uh you know giant manta a crab a giant crab you know would be a jellyfish and you just go up into it and you can peer out as you're going Ooh, that would be cool i dig it yeah yeah Yeah. just don't mind the tendrils (laughs) true uh so like these guys have said uh, just use your imagination. You can do damn near anything. Uh, you if know. you don't have an imagination, get a WoW account. Uh, except I think you're not supposed to get a WoW account anymore. I but wouldn't get a WoW account that. now. <laughs> get a WoW account for one month and then just be like, oh, hey, look at that mount. Look at that mount. And you will have enough ideas to last mm. you forever. Why do you think I love this subject, man? Because I am mount. I play video games and just mm. mount crazy. That That's that's part of my my thing is going out and collecting mounts. So I, I want a party of brownies and a giant pelican. There you go. A party of brownies and giant pelican. Yeah. yeah. Carry it. Carry it. That jowl. would be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> How are we going to get around? Oh, <laughs> Gulliver's travel kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So these are for the players. You're the DM. Uh, mm-hmm. How do you? Get them the mounts, and what do you do to screw with their mounts? Mm-hmm. Kyle. What do you do to screw with their mounts? How do you how do you, how do you get them and how do you screw with them? <clears throat> Oof. Um, you can introduce mounts as part of a quest. Uh, I mean, one of the things that we have in the actual world are prized horses and you know if one of them gets away someone needs to go after it and go get it uh i think i actually have one of my one shot adventures uh is surrounded by a an oliphant a prized woolly oliphant that the party has to go out in the wild get and bring back to its original owners and on the way riding there you get to have fun with that um and complications for mounts are just if you work out the traveling aspects of uh, of the world and how to get there, sometimes it's just putting a a bad thing at the end of a D100 roll and saying, you know what? A fucking gopher hole got gotcha. you. And your mount's leg is now broken. It's lame. That's a dick move, Kyle. Or... That that is. <laughs> yep. Sorry, you broke its leg. You don't have regenerate. But there is conveniently this pistol here. <laughs> Take. <laughs> Beats back on the menu, boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's two solid references. I mean, for me. to be fair, though, the biggest main issue and complication you ever throw at a mount as a dm is which one you're going into a dungeon oh yeah that one your mount doesn't fit we need to call that a rule we have rules number what (laughs) Yeah, yeah and so just saying yeah your horse hit a gopher hole and it's just like yeah that puts a damper on your day and it's not, yeah, you can't bring your mount here because we're not saying complications are not trying to say, no, you can't do this. It's saying this is an issue. How do you solve it? Get around it. Mm-hmm. I mean, your murder hobos are going to kill the horse and and eat it and everything like that. But your players who care are like, well, we got to fix the leg. We got to do this. We got to do that. Uh, the goal for complications, like I said, is to make a problem that is hopefully solvable. Uh, so a gopher hole is better than a cave that you can't bring a horse into. Um, like I said, you can explore the um, 
the biology, not the biology, the ecosystem of it all. Owl bears like to eat horses and will therefore um, try, and they're smart enough to try and attract wild horses. And so perhaps your horse breaks out and starts galloping in some random direction, and you got to go catch it before it figures out that there's a owl bear eating your horse. Um, oh. Go ahead. No, no, I was agreeing. I was like, yep. Oh, okay. Darn. I was hoping you had more to add there because I was running out of things. Uh, no. Yeah, so shooting your horse, uh, maiming your horse, all that fun stuff. David, you're the DM. Uh, how are you, you going to get him to mount? How are you going to fuck with it? Okay. Uh, the one that I did for Firewatch Island, they have to discover the laboratory, uh, find the cave, uh so they had that they also because this is a mechanical uh device that i'm going with i'm going with the apparatus of qualish i mean that that thing is a i mean that's a tradition in dnd and that is a find uh power supply and who knows how to pilot it you know so and what if what if that thing appeared in calamity <laughs> so i mean you know there are things like that you know technical <laughs> aspects of whatever so like mechanical uh you know things like that you know how is it going to react to you know weather conditions and things you know like the 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 airship you know i mean we had frost to deal with we had the rain uh the balloon you know, with a tear in it. I mean, you know, there are there are different ways, you know, that you can mess with your players with that. So I'm sticking with the mechanical route. Uh as far as the spectral though, like Phantom Steed, always be dispelled. That's true. Yep. Uh I, I will just go ahead and say uh, if you're gonna use mounts, you should always try and get your players engaged, uh, especially with a Margu campaign. They got upgrade your mounts. Well, they, they would, but they love their zonkies because their zonkies were payment. They were payment, and Felix would probably kill a fellow PC to save Buttercup's life. Yeah. Uh, and Frank or Middle Frank and Little Frank lost their zonkies when their ship sank. So they're riding giant chickens because he's a chicken whisperer. Uh, when you introduce mounts, be they spectral, mechanical, or living. Uh, you can really give your players a sense of depth. Uh, feeding them, mm -hmm. housing them, and training them uh, are the ways, the easiest ways to fuck with them or just break their leg. This yeah. reminds me, uh, there was a paladin uh, oath of the ancients. And so his mount, uh, the, the spell for that, which I'm having a brain fart on. Conjure Mount, we'll call it. Call Steed. Call yeah, Steed. Call Steed. Find yeah. Steed. Find See, I, I, Steed. I, I read that. Find yeah. Steed. You <laughs> still got the words wrong. You were close, though. Find uh, Steed and find uh, Greater Steed. He yeah. is found Steed um, was a fey creature, and it would refuse to do anything until it was paid in jewels, gold, fine ribbons, Mm -hmm. And so this horse would just be like, I need to ride you into battle. Mm. What you going to give me? <laughs> Not me. It's like, all right, fine. I'm going to braid your hair. And as I braid it, I'm going to put these rubies and diamonds into this braid. And so it was this glorious looking steed, prima donna. And just by adding, um, yeah, you got to make a deal with this horse because he's smarter than the average horse. Right. Uh, they absolutely love the horse. And of course, the one thing that was just absolutely aggravate them, I apologize about my child, um, is I'm that when the horse would disappear, <laughs> all the gold would stay there and just go boom into a big pile. And so as soon as you found the steed, you had to take it about an hour just to put all the <laughs> so right put it all back, back on, put that pretty <laughs> ribbon back on. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go, DMs. Uh, just a few opinions on mounts. Uh, we could 
as with a lot of our topics, we can expound on this for quite some time. Oh yeah, it's a uh, fun topic. Yeah, you, you, let's do it. Let's go long. We're going <laughs> long. <laughs> go ahead and no. Uh, but yeah, literally, if you want to give your players some depth, uh, a real sense of accomplishment, give them an animal. It doesn't even have to be a mount. Give them a puppy uh, because most people will protect that goddamn puppy till the end of time. Uh, mm -hmm. Others will let it die because they are sociopaths. Uh, but, you know, uh, think about interjecting a mount because if you aren't, if you don't enjoy watching your players suffer, crossing the frozen tundra without anything to eat or drink. <laughs> uh, you know, you can always give them mounts and expedite the process so they can get to their next adventure. Just food <laughs> for thought. Uh, folks, uh, this week is campaign week. We've got Kyle kicking in with cred on Thursday. We've got Dave and the others in calamity, I believe a side. Uh, mm -hmm. So you got that going for you. Uh, there, that is a, show waiting to happen uh sunday of course uh, the margu campaign these guys uh are just looking for trouble uh follow us on twitch follow us on twitter take a look at our youtube archive if you want to shoot shit about dnd join our discord if you want to buy our cool crap uh the link is down there thank you uh pirate dog dice at pirate dog dice on twitter for customized dice and uh kyle's new hanging wall art uh thank you adventure sense for the Great smells, except for Kyle's huffing that putrid sewers. Uh, check out their shine system if you want to write much more gooder than me. And also their Kickstarter for How to RPG with Your Cat is coming at you soon. Uh, if you want to be on this show or if you want to be on the One Shot next Saturday, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, hit us up. We will do our best to get you on there because the rest of us are just tired of talking. Folks, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., uh, join Kyle on Thursday and uh, us on Saturday. Uh, Data Game Kiss and Wave. Uh, bye, everybody. Oh, 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 you're so wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>